ই ক্লাস রুম স্পন্সর্ড বাই রাষ্ট্রীয় মাধ্যমিক শিক্ষা অভিযান ত্রিপুরা রাজ্য মিশন মাধ্যমিক স্তরের শিক্ষার গুণগত মানকে সুনিশ্চিত করার লক্ষ্যে রাষ্ট্রীয় মাধ্যমিক শিক্ষা অভিযান ত্রিপুরা রাজ্য মিশন কর্মরত মাধ্যমিক স্তরের শিক্ষক ও বিদ্যালয় প্রধানদের প্রশিক্ষণ বিজ্ঞান শিক্ষণ সামগ্রী প্রদান ছাত্রীদের আত্মরক্ষামূলক প্রশিক্ষণ মেধায় পিছিয়ে পড়া ছাত্রছাত্রীদের বিশেষ শিক্ষাদান প্রতিবন্ধীদের জন্য অনুদান রাজ্যে কলা উৎসব আয়োজন সহ অন্যান্য কর্মসূচি রূপায়ণ করছে জানেন কি বিদ্যালয় ছুট সারা দেশের একটি জ্বলন্ত সমস্যা এই সমস্যা সমাধানে রাষ্ট্রীয় মাধ্যমিক শিক্ষা অভিযানের উদ্যোগে আগামী পয়লা জানুয়ারি থেকে সপ্তাহব্যাপী বিদ্যালয় ফিরে চলো কর্মসূচি গ্রহণ করা হয়েছে চোদ্দ থেকে ১৬ বছর বয়সী সমস্ত ছেলে মেয়েদের মাধ্যমিক শিক্ষা সম্পূর্ণ করার জন্য আপনারা সবাই এগিয়ে আসুন students Hello, how are you all fine sir sit down thank you sir dear students what can be formed by two or more words sentence very good so we can form a sentence by two or more words but today we are going to study the rearrangement of words in a sentence and it is based on sentence and included in your syllabus so let us see the name of the topic is sentence rearrangement have all of you heard this topic i hope so all of you have heard the topic so let us see rearranging jumble words is a vital part of your syllabus so it is a very vital part it's very important so for example there's a jumble word given over here rice and i eating all of you can see it is it a right order it is not a right order so you have to write it in a proper way you have to write it i am eating rice so you have to write it in this way in order to get a proper sentence and let's move on to the next slide what is a sentence we have to know more about the sentence a sentence is a group of words that make complete sense. So without any complete sense, there cannot be a sentence. So if it is not making complete sense, it will be jumbled words. So the rearrangement of a group of jumbled words can be done in the following way. So here you see some jumbled words, a set of jumbled words, like rainbow, a color, seven, has. Isn't it? So if you order it properly, according to the logic of grammar, you can get a rainbow has seven colors. So let's see the next. We have to understand some basic sentence structure and the word order in a sentence. So what comes under the subject? What comes under the, under the object? What comes under the verb? All of you should understand. So here you see S plus B plus O W. S means the subject, B that's for the verb, or W that's for other words. So sometimes you can see you can make a sentence only by the subject plus the verb. And sometimes you can also make a sentence by using the subject, the verb, as well as other words. And basically the structure will be S, V, O. That's called the subject, verb, and the object. 
And so let us discuss something about what comes under the subject. So under the subject, you can see the noun, pronoun, and noun phrase. What is a noun? A noun is the name of persons, creatures, places, or things. So then you see under the object, you can see the same thing, the noun, pronoun, and the noun phrase. So they are, the, they are same, we can say, in case of noun and noun phrase. But in case of pronoun, you will have to use the subjective pronoun for the subject and the objective pronoun for the, for the object. So let me talk something about a noun. Anything that we see around us is called a noun. For example, house. House can be a noun. Boy, girl or anything that we see around us. And what is a pronoun? A pronoun is used instead of a noun. So some words like I, we, he, she, it, they, all these words are called pronoun. And regarding the noun phrase, I'll tell you. A car, the boy. the big house. So these are called noun phrase. A car here, you mean only one car. And the boy, you mean a particular boy. And here the big house. So all these words like a, da, da, big. All these words are called modifier words. As they modify the word car, boy, and house. So I hope so all of you understood what I explained. Teresa, can you tell me some helping verbs? M, is, are, was, were. Very good, sit down. M, is, are, was, were. And I'll add some more. Do, does, did, has, had, will, would, sell, should, may, might, can, would, must or to. So you can use all these words as helping verbs. And so let us discuss something about the principal verb. The principal verb is the main verb of the sentence. Let me give you an example. He reads the book. So here you get the word read. The word read, that's the main part. So you can get words like this, such as go, sing, swim, talk, or anything like this. All doing words are called verbs. So we have finished uh, this. Let's move on. So let's talk about uh, the pronouns. The different form of pronouns are given under, like for subject, I, we, he, she, it, you, and for the, for the object, it's me, us, him, her, it, you. And for the possessive, it's my, our, his, her, it's your. So in case of possessive, you always have to accompany a noun. For example, let me tell you, my house, my house, for example, my is a case of poss possessive and house is a noun. So a possessive pronoun and a noun will always accompany together. So let's move on. Let's practice some jumble words to make meaningful sentence. So you s I'll give you some jumble words and we'll try to solve it. So here you are getting 1971. 1971, it is the name of a year. So it is a noun. It became, it is a verb, it, that is a 
pronoun. Independent, that's an adjective, and in, that's a preposition. So I'll try with the verb first, because the verb acts as the agent. It acts as the agent of the subject as well as the object. Became. For example, you see it. What it became? Something became. So can it be like this? Independent became it in 1971? I don't think so. So you have to see the pronoun as well as the noun. It. This is the pronoun. I just put it before became. It became then the adjective. Independent in 1971. So you are getting the pronoun as the subject, then the bar, and the rest of it. So let me try the next for you all again. Which one will be the bar here? Has enriched civilization eat our? The bar will be enriched. This is the main bar in this set of sample words. So I am writing the bar at first enriched. Why? Because you have to take the main agent of the sentence first. So enriched, that is the main agent of the sentence. And you can get here, it, that's a pronoun, isn't it? Our, that's possessive pronoun, has, that's an auxiliary verb, or we can call it helping verb. Civilization, that's a noun. So if there is a possessive pronoun, a noun will always accompany. So it will be our civilization. Our civilization. And the helping verb will always come before the main verb. Like has. And I'm writing the pronoun it. So it is completed now. It has enriched our civilization. পুষ্টিকর খাদ্য এবং শিক্ষা আমাদের নিতান্ত প্রয়োজনীয় জিনিস আপনি কি জানেন বর্তমানে ত্রিপুরায় বিদ্যালয় শিক্ষা দপ্তরের অধীনে মধ্যাহ্ন আহার প্রকল্পের উদ্যোগে সব কোটি বিদ্যালয়ে সবজি বাগান গড়ে তোলা হচ্ছে ছাত্রছাত্রীদের পুষ্টিকর খাদ্য প্রদান করার লক্ষ্যে সেই বাগানে উৎপাদিত সার এবং কীটনাশকবিহীন সবজি প্রথম থেকে অষ্টম শ্রেণীর শিক্ষার্থীদের মিড ডে মিলে ব্যবহার করা হয় চলুন শিক্ষার্থীদের স্বাস্থ্যকর এবং নির্ভেজাল খাদ্য প্রদান ও সুস্থ সমাজ গড়ার লক্ষ্যে আমরা সবাই এগিয়ে আসি এবং প্রত্যেকটি বিদ্যালয়ে সবজি বাগান গড়ে তুলতে বিদ্যালয় কর্তৃপক্ষকে সাহায্য করি Now the third set of example words will be for you all. Gaurav, can you tell me the subject? I. Okay, thank you. Sit down. I. I is the subject. We already know. <coughs> Pretty Lotta, can you tell me the verb? Read. Read. Sit down. Thank you. So read. I'm writing it here. So. I read. I is the subject, read is the verb. Then what about writing? Writing, it is a noun. It is a noun form from the verb by adding ing to it. That's called a gerund. So what shall we do with it? Writing. You are not you are noting it down here. The word writing. So what's left out? Cannot you are. So I Writing, no, writing is already written. <coughs> this is a negative verb as well as helping verb. The word cannot is a negative word because of the word not. And this is helping verb, the word can. So I cannot read your writing. Why is it your writing? Your is a possessive pronoun. That is why you have to write your writing. And writing is not a verb here, it is a noun. So we have completed the sentence, I cannot read your writing. So let's move on to the next. We are going to solve some interrogative questions. 
So sentence cannot be only of the affirmative. There should be some interrogative also. So you will get, especially in your syllabus, some interrogative sentence. So you see here the WH words, isn't it? There are two types of interrogatives. All of you know it. One is WH question, and the other is yes, no questions. So for yes, no questions, you are going to use the helping verbs. And for the interrogative questions, all of you will use the WH words, isn't it? Like for example, let me give you an example. What, when, where, why, who, how. All these words are called WH words. And then what about the helping verbs or you can say the auxiliary verbs? Am, is, are, was, where, etc. There are more words. And moreover, these interrogative words will always come before the subject or it will be at the beginning of the sentence. For example, you can see here, what would you like to tell me? Here, the word, what, and then the auxiliary verb, would. You is the subject, and you can see other verbs like, and then you can also see the, the indirect object. So let's move on to the next slide. And you have to keep this in mind. You don't use an auxiliary verb if you ask for the subject. In this case, the interrogative simply takes the place of the subject. So the interrogative will take the place of the subject, like in the case of the word who. Here you see interrogative verb and object. So you don't have to mention the subject here, because the interrogative simply takes the place of the subject. So let us do some more exercise based on interrogative sentences. So here I gave you four sets of jumbled words. I'll do the first one, and then I can ask any one of you to do the second one. That I'll do the third one, and then the fourth one, I can ask any one of you. So let me try the first one. Can the book read you? So you have to bring some logic here. Can the book read you? Can the book read you? The book cannot read people. Isn't it? We all know that. So what if we bring the verb at first, read? Can the book read you or can you read the book? Which is more logical? Can you read the book? That will be more logical. So you have to search for some logical question also. So the second one, to sir, can you yes, try? Sir. Sir, can my cat fit you? Sit down. I am sorry, dear. Actually, you have given me the wrong answer. Can my cat fit you? You told me, can my cat feed you? Actually, cat is the name of an animal. Can a cat feed people? Or we people should feed the cat? So you have to make some logical order. So cat cannot feed people. So we should write, can you feed my cat? So this will be the right answer. So the difference between the second set of jumble words and the third set of jumble words, there is a little bit of difference. In the first part, you get the helping verb. But now we are going to do some WH word. Isn't it? Which word? W-H-A-T. That is the word. Isn't it? W-H-A-T. So look at the word. Last night you what do did. In this case, you see last night. It is somewhat a noun phrase, isn't it? Like last, that's the adjective, night, 
you already know you, that's the pronoun. What, that's the word, do. Do will be the main part. Do will be the main part. Did, that's a helping verb. So come on, let us arrange what did. Okay, I'm writing the word did because it will come before the main part. Isn't it? You. So you is the subject and the main part. Then just continue last night. So you can get a complete sentence by arranging in this way. So the last set of jumble words will be for all of you. I can, okay, Deepa, can you solve it? What is in your backpack? What is in your backpack? backpack. Okay, it's very good. It's a very good answer. What is in your backpack? What is in your backpack? So, which is the main verb here? Actually, we cannot get any main verb, but the helping verb is forming the sentence. Which is the helping verb? I already told you, is is the helping verb. So I think so we have finished. So let's move to the next. So all of you should keep in mind regarding these interrogatives. In an interrogative sentence, the subject is always stated, but it does not begin the sentence. So I already told you, you can see here, the subject will never begin the sentence in case of interrogatives. You can usually find the subject of an interrogative by rearranging the question. So sometimes you can rearrange the question into a statement. Then ask who or what is doing the action of the verb. Isn't it? Then ask who or what, what is doing the action of the verb. In the example, you'll see, will the taxi get to the airport on time? The taxi will get to the airport in time. So you are just changing the position of the helping verbs. Isn't it? Here the helping verb is will. So. The subject will always come first in a statement, isn't it? But in an interrogative sentence, the subject will never come first. So let's move on to the next. It's over. So any question? OK, Priyanka. Sir, what are direct and indirect objects? OK, very good question. Sit down. Direct and indirect. Objects. So let me explain you a bit regarding this. I'll give you an example. My mom bought me a necklace. My mom bought me a necklace. So what is a direct object. A direct object is the receiver of the action of the verb. And what is an indirect object? And an indirect object identifies the person or the thing for whom the action of the verb is performed. So for whom here you see my mom. My mom, it's a noun phrase. Can we say it? No. My is a possess possessive word. So bought, this is the main verb. Necklace, me. Mm. So there are two objects here, isn't it? Bought is the main verb. What did my mother buy? My mother buy a necklace. If it is a necklace, that means this is the direct object, isn't it? direct object and me for whom the action is done indirectly upon whom upon me so me is the indirect object so we are getting the indirect object as well as the direct object 
I hope so all of you enjoyed my class. If there is any question or doubt, then we can continue in the next class. That's all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. ड्रप आउटर घुचिए क्षत स्कूले पड़ुआर बाढ़ भीड़ सर्वशिक्षा मिड डे मिले स्कूल सकल आशार नीड राज्य छोद बचर सब शिशु विद्यालय रांगिन एने तर बुनियादी शिक्षा सुनिश्चित करते सर्वशिक्षा अभिजान बद्धपरिकर तर शिक्षार सुविधार जो रही है बनामूल्य पाठ्य बी विद्यालय पोशाक उन्नत मान पढ़ाशुना स्वास्थ्यसम्मत शौचागार विशुद्ध पानी जल पुष्टिकर मध्यान्न आहार खिलाधूलार व्यवस्था एवं और अनेक कि हाँ तई देरी ना आज ही अपन एलिकार सब शिशु निकटवर्ती सरकारी विद्यालय भर्ती होते उत्साहित कर इ क्लसरूम वज स्पन्सड बाष्ट्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा अभियान त्रिपुरा राज्य मिशन